Hello, my name is Dr. Kristen Moon, and I just wanted to give you some details about the live online anatomy and physiology course that I'm offering for high schoolers through True North Homeschool Academy. First, let me give you just a little bit of background about me. I am a scientist by training. I have an undergraduate degree in microbiology and I have a PhD in microbiology and molecular genetics, both from the University of Florida. My goal with those degrees was to pursue a career in lab research. And I did do lab research for a time and really enjoyed it. But once I had my first child, I recognized that my true heart's desire was to stay at home with my kids. So that's what I did. I left lab life behind and stayed at home. And when it was time for my kids to start school, I decided to homeschool them. And we homeschooled them throughout their entire K through 12 education. And they are now graduated from our homeschool. They are both in college and they both are majoring in the sciences. So um, when I started to see that my time homeschooling my own kids was drawing to a close, I wanted to figure out what to do with my degree and with my passions. And I recognized that I really love teaching science especially to homeschoolers. So I decided to create my own business, Kristen Moon Science. Um, I have a blog, I have some self-paced courses, and I have also been teaching in online academies, including True North Homeschool Academy. This will be my third year teaching online classes and I really enjoy it. So what does my anatomy and physiology class look like? Well, we meet for a live online class once a week. And then for the remainder of the week, students will log on to their learning platform and complete any assignments or hands-on activities or labs that I assign. Um, the online class component is really fun and I absolutely love getting together with my, my students every week. They can see me, I can see them, we can talk to one another, we have a really good time. Um, there is no textbook to buy from my class because I provide all of the necessary um, curriculum and materials that your student will need. They do need to purchase a very inexpensive anatomy and physiology coloring book that's going to help them um, internalize the details and start to memorize some of the anatomy that they need to know for the class. I take care of all of the grading and there is a prerequisite for this class. It is this class is best um, taken after a student has already had one full year of high school biology. That's because we hit the ground running in anatomy and physiology. And I assume that a student already has a good background in cells and organelles and all of the things that a student will learn in a high school biology class. A little plug, if you're interested in my classes and your student hasn't taken biology yet, I do offer a biology class um, through True North Homeschool Academy. So what do we talk about in this class? We start off the year learning the special terminology and vocabulary that is used by people studying anatomy and physiology. Then we do spend one week doing a real quick review of the things that your student should have learned in biology class, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Then we start by learning about the four different types of tissues. Believe it or not, your entire body is made up of only four different types of tissues. So students learn about the four types of tissues, learn the special features and organization of each of those tissues. Then we move into the body systems. We start with the integumentary system, which you probably are more familiar with. It's the skin and the hair and the sweat glands and all of those sorts of things. Then we move on to the skeletal system, the muscular system, the nervous system, endocrine system, circulatory system, lymphatic system, respiratory system, digestive system, urinary system, and we round off the year with the reproductive system. Um, and we spend... Um, at minimum one week, we spend one week on the endocrine system, but, but the other weeks we spend at least two, sometimes three or four weeks on the system. It just depends on what we're covering. So what do we do in each of the units? Well, for every body system that the students learn, they have a case study to solve. So basically what this looks like is they're given um, a patient and given symptoms and then some different links and they have to figure out what malady that patient is suffering from. And in doing so, they start to learn more about how the body systems work together, how defects in a body system or an organ or a tissue type might lead to disease, what that looks like. And it's kind of getting some practice 
for those of the students that want to go into a medical career, they're, they're learning what that kind of uh, job might entail. Um, whenever I can and all through my classes, I always try to help students understand how what we're learning in that class relates to real life. Because if a student doesn't understand what makes the topic relevant to them, they turn off. So I want to get them excited by understanding that what we're learning relates to their everyday life. So for example, um, most of us have had swollen glands when we're sick or a fever. We learn what is happening inside our body that's making us have swollen glands and a fever. Um, people have heard that vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. Why is that? How does sunshine produce vitamin D in our body? Um, why do muscles ache after we exercise? These are just a sample of some of the things that um, we discuss that helps students understand how the, the material relates to their everyday life. So in addition to their coursework and their assignments and the case studies, they have some memorization to do, but I also include lots of hands-on labs and activities. For example, when we're studying the respiratory system, students can measure their own lung capacity at home. When we're studying the digestive system, they are tasked with um, creating a, a model out of string that represents the length of their own digestive system. And then they compare the length of their digestive system to the digestive system lengths of their peers and other members of their family. When we're studying the endocrine system, each student gets to choose a particular hormone for them to research, and then they present what they have learned to me. They can do this through, through a video, a slide presentation, or a paper. When we're talking about the nervous system and the muscular system, they can measure their own reaction time. They can do some activities to explore their senses. They have an optional activity when we're talking about the digestive system and wondering why do we eat? I mean, we like to eat, but biologically, what is the purpose of food? Why do we have to eat? They can actually do an activity in which they measure the amount of calories in different foods of their choice. And when we're studying the um, skeletal system, they can do an online or they can do a hands-on activity to, to experimentally determine what makes a bone both strong and flexible. We do uh, do many dissections in anatomy and physiology, as you might expect, because it's one thing to, uh, to look at a picture of an organ. It's entirely another thing to actually see it in front of you um, in a preserved specimen. So the different dissections we do, the very first dissection is a chicken wing from the grocery store which might seem silly, but it's actually a great first dissection to get students used to dissecting. It also ties in three dis different systems, the integumentary system, the muscular system, and the skeletal system. We also dissect a brain, an eyeball, which is actually my favorite of all the dissections. We dissect a heart and a kidney. And at the very end of the year, we dissect a fetal pig because in that way, since a pig is a mammal, we're able to see in one whole organism how all the different body sy systems and how all the different organs that we've studied come together in a whole organism. And it's really neat. Students are not required to dissect if they don't want to, but they have the opportunity to dissect if they would like to. The dissections I perform during our live class, I have a document camera so my students can see my hands and my specimen as I'm dissecting. If they choose to, they can dissect alongside me at home or they might choose just to watch me dissect. Either option is perfectly fine. But for many of the dissections that we're going to do prior to dissecting, one of their assignments will be to construct a 3D model of the thing that we're dissecting, maybe an eyeball, maybe a heart, maybe a kidney, maybe a fetal pig. And in that way, they internalize the structures. So here is a sample of one of the, uh, the homework assignments that my students turned in. So this would be an example of one of these 3D dissection models that we do prior to, to dissecting. So she's going to walk you through it. So you, this student prints this all out on cardstock and then follows the directions and puts the whole thing together. So even if a student is not dissecting, they have this model that they can refer to and they can see how all of the different organs um, work together. And it's really neat. And this is something that I provide. 
So we also, the students do have to take tests after every body system, but they know, you know, I provide a study guide and they know exactly what's going to be on the test. And this is important because this really helps students, especially those who plan to go on to college, understand how to study and um, how to take tests. And less, and, you know, lest you think that you know, this is a really tough class. Believe me, um, it is challenging, but I try to make it as fun as possible. Um, I always add opportunities to play games and have extra simulations. Um, when we're learning about the skeletal system, we play a game of bone bingo. The very last class of the semester, we play anatomy and physiology jeopardy. And so students can remember all the things that they've learned and, and play against each other to see who remembers what. Um, the class is challenging, but it's enjoyable and fun. In fact, um, I have one student who's actually, this will be her third year with me. Um, she's taking my chemistry class, but she took anatomy and physiology last year and she accidentally overslept and missed our live class. And she was in tears because yes, yeah, she could um, watch the class recording. I was happy to send the class recording to her, but she just missed the opportunity to meet with us live online. So if you have any questions about this class or any of the classes that I teach, please let me know.